States of America in Bible prophecy. Uh, the United States is most certainly talked about in Bible prophecy. Dispensational futurists deny it because of the presuppositions of their own eschatological system. These are the five main false teachings I would outline as the five main false teachings of the dispensational futurist eschatological system. All five of these points need to be refuted. Pre-tribulation rapture, seven-year period of tribulation, uh, the rise of a single solitary Mr. Diabolical called Antichrist will be an individual human being and that the majority of the events of the book of Revelation will only begin to unfold during this last uh, mythical seven-year period of tribulation and only after a mythical pre-trib rapture, which, of course, they temporally separate from the second advent, which is not warranted in scripture. Uh, the modern nation state that calls itself Israel has a pivotal role to play in end times and then uh, the issue of the millennium. Christ will return at his second advent and reign on the earth for a thousand years. That is also false. Uh, however, premillennialism is true. The postmillennialists are wrong about that. So are the amillennialists. But it will not be an earthly reign, but a heavenly reign. Uh, so their eschatological system precludes them from seeing the United States in uh, Bible prophecy. And preterism also does not allow for anyone to see the United States and Bible prophecy because all the events of the book of Revelation happened by the close of the 5th century AD, which of course that was the fall of the Roman Empire, or these high partial preterists, Gary DeMar and uh, these folks, uh, and Kenneth L. Gentry in his book Before Jerusalem Fell, uh, as preterist, high partial preterists say that the, uh, the book of Revelation is talking about primarily the destruction of the city of Jerusalem. Uh, and uh, the temple there by the Roman armies in 70 AD. So the United, the United States could not be mentioned because our country was formed far too late to fit the preterist interpretation of prophetic events. Ever hear of circular argumentation? Yes, their argumentation is circular. There is one main text of scripture in which the United States of America is symbolized in Bible prophecy. Before we go on, we have to start at Daniel chapters 2 and 7. We have to understand the prophetic templates of Daniel 2 and 7. Uh, Daniel 2 gives us a, a basic blueprint or template, and then Daniel 7 fills in some of the some extra information. There's a hermeneutic principle of repeat and expand. So here's Daniel chapter 2, this great metal man image, the head of gold, symbolizing the Neo-Babylonian Empire. Chest and arms of silver, the Medo-Persian Empire, mi uh, middle and belly thighs of bronze, the Grecian Empire, two legs of iron, the Roman Empire. Notice, notice how these are all empires. That is, they are suzerain kingdoms. They are kingdoms that have lesser vassal kingdoms underneath them. So think of an empire as an umbrella, an umbrella nation that has lesser vassal nations under it that it controls. Okay, um, and what is that empire today? obviously. Uh, and then, the, so two legs of iron in the Roman Empire, and then the Roman Empire comes to an end in 476 AD. And then we have the feet and toes of iron mixed with clay, which means that the stone that's cut without human hands right here, that smites the metal man image on the feet and toes of iron and clay, bringing it down. Notice Daniel chapter two, it was cut by no human hand. This stone uh, struck the image on its feet of iron and clay and broke them in pieces. That does not represent the first advent of Christ. The first advent of Christ came at about the hyphen the, of the two legs of iron, the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire would go on for another 440 some odd years after the, after the first um, century AD, after the first advent of Christ. The stone that smites the feet and toes of iron and clay, which happens sometime after 476 AD then, is the second advent, not the first Okay, so make sure we understand that. It is the second advent. The first ad advent came at about the kneecaps of the two legs of iron. Moving on to Daniel chapter 7. The hermeneutic principle of repeat and expand is exhibited here in Daniel chapter 7. So let's move on. Four great beasts that come up out of the sea. That tells us that a beast is not representative of a single solitary individual human being. So see the sea beast of Revelation 13. That is the Antichrist. Here we have four beasts. First, like a lion, eagle's wings, Babylonian Empire. A second, like a bear, raised up on one side, three ribs in its mouth. That's the Medo-Persian Empire. The Another one, the leopard with uh, birds of wing, uh, uh, wings of a bird on its back. 
That's the Grecian Empire. And then the fourth is obviously the Roman Empire, the Iron Monarchy of Rome. Now, when Rome falls in 476 AD, there are 10 lesser vassal tribal kingdoms that made up the Roman Empire after its fall in 476 AD. And here's the list, the Lombards, the Franks, the Ostrogoths, the Visigoths, the Burgundians, the Suebi, the Heruli, the Vandals, the Alemanni, and the Saxons. And I couldn't fit Saxons right up there. Uh, but these kingdoms are variously represented in the nations of Europe today by Italy, France, England. Oh, I, I, I did have England in there. Okay. I just put Britain in there because I thought I had forgotten to put... Uh, I'm going to put et al. Et al. at all it just capitalizes it <laughs> anyway etc 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 okay so th those are the 10 kingdoms anyway france uh, italy france england austria belgium holland spain portugal germany switzerland etc uh but then three of those would be plucked up by the roots three of those 10 uh up there right here after the fall of the roman empire three of these 10 would be plucked up by the roots the Roman Empire never really left, according to Daniel chapter 2. Nope, there would always be a remnant of that iron uh, in the feet and toes of iron mixed with clay. So another horn, a little one, before whom three of the first horns were plucked up by the roots would arise and continue for 1260 years. Those were the Heruli, defeated in 493 AD, the Vandals, 534 AD, the Ostrogoths, defeated in 538 AD. And by the way, these all were Aryan kingdoms. They held to the Aryan heresy of church history in the West there, the Herli, the Vandals, and the Ostrogoths, okay, versus the Catholic Trinitarians, okay, the tra tr Catholics were, were uh, called Catholic because they were Trinitarian, that's what Catholic is associated with, is being a Trinitarian, okay. Uh, holding to, for example, the Council of Nicaea, um, and then later the Niceno-Constantinopolitan Creed, and things like that. The Doctrine of the Trinity, Christology. These were Aryan kingdoms. And then the Little Horn would rise up at about 538 AD. Okay, That is Papal Rome, and continue for 1260 literal years years 1260 literal years that time prophecy time times half a time is given seven times in scripture twice in the book of daniel and five times in the book of revelation so look at all these the two witnesses of revelation 11 the woman in the wilderness of revelation chapter 12 and of course the sea beast of revelation 13 verses 1 through 10 also known as the little horn of daniel chapter 7 they're the same entity these 1260 days time times half a time or 42 months are all the same prophetic time prophecy. And that little horn would continue for that time. The sea beast, um, beast rising up out of the sea. Uh, the sea represents a densely populated area. For example, Revelation 17, verse 15, talking about the scarlet harlot, the whore of Babylon, that is papal Rome. The waters that you saw where the prostitute is seated are peoples, multitudes, nations, and languages. Uh, let's see, there's only one entity that fits all the defining characteristics of the Antichrist in Scripture, not from speculative nonsense, that is the Roman Papal Church state. So 1260 days, again, biblical precedent, Numbers 14, 34, 33 through 34, Ezekiel 4, 4 through 6, uh, Daniel 9, 24 through 27. We use the day equals year principle in all of those, Dr. John Gill. Uh, writing uh, in his commentary, he uh, lives in the 18th century, so he dies in 1771. Uh, his commentary on Revelation 11, verse 2, the 42 months, this date cannot be understood strictly and literally, for it is too short a time for her to gain so much power, honor, and riches as in the 13th, 17th, and 18th chapters of the, of the book of Revelation show. This must be understood prophetically of so many months of years. 1260 years, a day for a year after the prophetic style make 12, notice the prophetic style. So in the apocalyptic books of Daniel and Revelation, that's what we have here. 1260 years. Now, let me just, let me just bring up Edwards, Jonathan Edwards. Okay. Part four. Notice what Edwards says. Volume one of Edwards. It is certain that the 1260 days or years, notice years did not commence before the year of Christ 479. What does he mean? He means before the fall of the Roman Empire. 
the 1260 years did not commence until after the fall of the Roman Empire. I say 538 AD is the best date, 538 AD. Matthew Henry, Matthew Henry also wrote, 1,203 score days, this number of prophetic days taking a day for a year, okay, would give us a prospect when the end shall be. Again, when is he writing? Dies in the early part of the 18th century, latter part of the 17th century AD, okay? So he didn't see the end. He didn't see the end of the 1260 years. Uh, Methodist uh, Bible, uh, Methodist scholar and biblical exegete Adam Clark in his commentary, these 42 months are prophetic. So many years as there are days contained in them. The beast, therefore, will continue in existence at least 1260 years. Notice, years, years, 1260 years. Add 1260 years to 538 AD. And what do you come up with? 1798. Okay, when Papal Rome received a deadly wound in 1798. Okay, just here, here, just, this is just Wikipedia. I'll just go to Wikipedia. <laughs> okay, that's easy enough. Napoleon and the Catholic Church. What happened? Let's go up to here. General Berthier, Louis Alexandre Berthier, marched to Rome, entered it unopposed, 10th of February, 1798, and proclaiming a Roman Republic, which was to be a sister republic of the first French Republic, demanded the Pope renounce his temporal power. That was the deadly wound 1260 years after it started in 538 AD. That's why, uh, that's why uh, Edwards couldn't determine the time from the beginning, and many Protestants couldn't do that. They tried to guess, uh, but that's all they had because they didn't see the end in 1798. They all died before that. Okay, when the Papal States were stripped from Pope Pius VI, and he was taken into captivity, uh, and this was by military power. So he who goes into captivity uh, and then, uh, you know, with the sword. So the rise of the earth beast happens at around this same time. Okay, it is around the time of the Antichrist reception of a deadly wound, 1798, that another beast would rise to power slowly but surely. And having lamb-like or Christ-like beginnings, the earth beast would eventually rise to world-dominating power and status and would speak as a dragon, Satan and uh, would, would cause the enforcement of the mark of the sea beast. The mark of the Antichrist is not uh, enforced by the Antichrist. The mark of the Antichrist will be enforced by the false prophet, also known as the earth beast. Uh, it is this entity which will enforce the mark of the beast. Uh, of course, what is the world dominating empire that arose out of the earth, a sparsely populated area, ha having Christ-like principles? At around the same time, Papal Rome received a deadly wound in 1798. Okay. Um, so it rose in the latter part of the 18th century and became a world-dominating hyperpower, but would eventually speak like the dragon and enforce the mark of the beast. That's the United States. There's no other entity on the planet or in history that matches the biblical identity of the earth beast. She arose around the same time as the sea beast received its deadly wound, 1798. She started out with uh, lamb-like, Christ-like principles. No one can deny the Bible-believing Christians that made up the majority of the United States population at its inception in the latter 18th century, right? Jonathan Edwards lived before this, before the, the United States, before we declared our independence. He dies in 1758, but he was called America's Calvin, okay? We weren't even a, a country, an independent country at that time. She rose to world-dominating empire status. That's what beast means in Bible prophecy. She is the only economic, military, and political hyperpower in the world. No one compares to the United States. Okay, She is the undisputed champion of geopolitics with the money and muscle to back up her ambitions. She uh, rose out of the earth, meaning she rose out of a sparsely populated area of the planet. We were called the New World. It was called, This was the New World as opposed to the sea beast, which arose out of a densely populated area. So did the Babylonian Empire, followed by the Medo-Persian, followed by the Grecian, followed by the Roman Empires, all rose up out of densely, already densely populated areas, areas of the world where there were multitudes of nations, uh, peoples, kindreds, and tongues. Uh, uh, and they were suzerain empires. Now, let's just notice, before we uh, end here, uh, 14 minutes in already, okay, let's just notice that, for example, here's NATO, right? Here's NATO. All the blue right here. This is the United States. This, These are independent nations, but we are a suzerain empire over these lesser vassal nations. That's what we have here as a beast. We are the beast rising up. This, all these blue, 
this NATO, these NATO nations, the, this is the United States. There is no NATO. There is no all these blue states without the United States. You want to know why? Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All those nations, those blue nations, th this is what they give for military spending to NATO right here. Total, it's about 29.53%. All this is what the U.S., the United States alone gives in military spending to NATO. 70.46%. You see that? The United States is NATO. These are all the NATO countries combined, and they're what they contribute to military spending, not the United States. The United States is taken out of this pie chart. Okay, so you got the UK, Germany, and France. Those are the three biggest contributors in this smaller section. They're the three biggest contributors here. But this is the United States. So United States, uh, look look up the dollar. Obviously, the dollar is the world's reserve currency. And uh, right now, uh, the euro has always been seen as a potential challenger and competitor to the dollar. Uh, the euro is in, in big trouble right now. They're hurting. They fell below the dollar for the first time in 20 years. So the elites you know, that, that really run the country, not our representative elected, so-called elected uh, representatives. They don't run the country. It's the, the elites pulling their strings. They're who run the United States. Um, and they are delighted that the Russia-Ukraine conflict uh, is causing uh, the euro to, to, to weaken, a weakening of the euro. Okay. That's all I wanted to say on that. So we got 16 minutes. I'm good to go. Uh, comments down below, all that. I, I'm doing this real quick before I get ready to go to work. Talk to you soon. Sole Deo Gloria.